One of the primary fundamental techniques that new SOLIDWORKS users learn is to always fully define their sketches. The key reason for this is good design intent. Fully defined sketches, along with a strategic selection of dimensions, sketch relations, and feature types, will result in a model that behaves exactly how you intend it to when you make changes to it. Proper design intent also allows for more effective use of configurations and can help prevent design errors, among other benefits. Now, while it may be relatively easy to fully define a line or a rectangle, for example, most sketches aren't so simple, and even the experts forget to add a constraint here or there, resulting in an underdefined sketch. So, what do we do when we can't figure out what's causing a sketch to remain underdefined? What tools and options are available to us to understand problematic or confusing areas of our sketches? The community has been asking these same questions, and we're answering them in this edition of Ask Solid Professor. Here, try this. No, oh, yeah, there you. we go. That wasn't too bad. First and foremost, while good sketching technique is easily one of the most important, if not the most important design skill, it's certainly not the only skill you'll need to be successful in SOLIDWORKS. If you're new to the program or new to CAD in general, I'd highly recommend taking a look at our Introduction to SOLIDWORKS course. Here you'll find several lessons dedicated specifically to sketching best practices, along with tutorials and practice exercises for creating parts, assemblies, and drawings. Now, let's discuss how we can determine what's causing a sketch to remain underdefined. Depending on the complexity of the sketch and how many underdefined entities are remaining, the difficulty of this task can vary pretty significantly. So we're going to start out with a very simple example to illustrate a couple of points, and then we'll get progressively more complex. Here I have a circle, and if you're familiar with the default colors used to indicate sketch definition status, you already know that the blue color means the circle is underdefined. And you also probably already know how to solve this. But just to double check, I can click and drag any underdefined sketch entity showing in blue and watch carefully how it behaves. Here, a click drag shows the circle expanding in size and I'll want to constrain that. Adding a simple dimension will work here. Or will it? The circle is still blue, so what's going on? While well, using the same technique as before, I'll click and drag the blue circle and nothing happens. This can be really confusing, so I'll explain what's going on first and then we'll discuss how to solve it. The dimension we added is in fact controlling the diameter of the circle, so that particular aspect of the sketch is fully defined. However, I never attach the center point of the circle to the origin, so the position of the circle can still be changed, hence the underdefinition. In order for a sketch to be fully defined, its position also has to be constrained to the origin in some way, or constrained to another entity which is itself constrained to the origin. When I click and drag the perimeter of the circle, I'm essentially trying to adjust its size, which is controlled by the dimension, so nothing happens. To move the whole contour, I have two options. Click and drag the center point of the circle, or if shaded sketch contours is enabled in the sketch tab, click and drag within the gray area that appears. Now I can easily select both the center point and the origin, apply a coincident relation, and the circle becomes fully defined. So what are the big takeaways here? When trying to fully define a sketch, start by clicking and dragging underdefined entities and pay attention to how they behave. This behavior will inform you which constraints are missing and give you a good idea of what to do next. If you find that dragging a blue sketch entity does nothing, consider that the adjustment you're trying to make may actually already be constrained and try dragging a different entity or maybe an endpoint. With that in mind, let's take a look at another example, this time using a few more sketch entities. This sketch is still relatively simple, but I've set it up to be tricky and illustrate a few more points. Let's start by figuring out why these lines are underdefined. Another popular tool to use when investigating sketches is to turn on the symbols for sketch relations and look for irregularities. This can be found under the eyeball symbol in the heads up view toolbar. Just make sure to click the arrow next to the eye and not the eye itself, as this will toggle the visibility of everything in the submenu all at once. This visual display of sketch relations can be really useful, but can also become overwhelming in very large or complex sketches, so use this tool at your own discretion. I see some vertical and horizontal relations, a coincident relation to the sketch origin, and a couple of equal relations, ensuring these two lines are always the same length. Dragging either one of the blue sketch segments, I can see this behavior in action. All four of the underdefined lines change at once, as they're all dependent on one another due to the existing sketch relations. And you'll notice I said all four of the underdefined lines, even though only two of them are blue. Even though the very top line and the far right line are black, notice that their endpoints remain blue. This is because while the orientation and the beginning point of the lines may be constrained, 
the length is not. This applies to many different types of sketch geometry, so always be on the lookout for blue endpoints. Now comes the fun part. How should we constrain the sketch? This is really up to you and depends on your desired design intent, but ultimately adding a simple dimension to any of these underdefined lines will finish the job. Now this may look like a fully defined sketch, but a quick look at the feature manager suggests otherwise. The dash in parentheses next to the sketch name indicates that this is still underdefined, but nothing is blue. If you look very closely though, you may notice that one of the sketch lines looks just a little bit strange, and moving this 130 dimension reveals a blue line segment underneath the leader that was obscuring it. Consider this your public service announcement to watch out for sneaky leaders. I can also see that this line has no constraints associated with it other than the 130 and 80 millimeter dimensions, but additionally, just like our last example, dragging it doesn't seem to do anything. The display delete relations command can be used to further explore existing constraints in the sketch and can be exceptionally useful in cases like this. If I select the second to last distance relation, which represents the 130 millimeter dimension, I can expand the entities dropdown and see what it's attached to. Here you'll notice two points listed, the sketch origin and the upper endpoint of the line in question. When originally creating the 130 millimeter dimension, I selected the origin and this upper endpoint, using the horizontal aspect to create the dimension and ultimately leaving the lower endpoint underdefined and thus able to move. To resolve this, I can simply apply a vertical relation to the line, but keep in mind that the 130 millimeter dimension is still only attached to the upper endpoint. Unless design intent were to demand it for some reason, I'd prefer to recreate this dimension using the outside vertical lines or the horizontal line at the bottom to make these sketch relationships more obvious and predictable. The big takeaway here is that it's very important to be aware which sketch entities your constraints are actually controlling, both when initially creating sketches and when dealing with under definition. Sometimes it can be difficult to tell, but paying close attention to endpoints, showing sketch relation symbols, and using tools like display delete relations can really help. Let's have a look at another example that uses a variety of sketch entity types. There's no trickery going on here, and this is just a classic example of what troubleshooting an underdefined sketch might look like in the day-to-day -day of a SOLIDWORKS user. I do want to reiterate here though, many of the relations and dimensions that I'm going to use throughout this process are based on imaginary design intent, and there are a lot of other ways you could fully define this sketch depending on your needs. Let's start with the obvious. I can move the entire sketch around because it isn't connected to the origin. We can fix that with a simple coincident relation, but we have many options to consider for that. Often drafters will select the center or the corner of an obvious design feature to connect to the origin. And here I'm inclined to use the center of this large circle. You'll notice I'm taking advantage of the shaded contours feature here. And each contour moves independently since they're underdefined. I highly recommend this when trying to move large numbers of sketch entities at once, as clicking and dragging individual sketch entities can get pretty crazy, especially when many sketch elements are underdefined like this. And speaking of which, always remember that the undo command is at your disposal, especially when working with arcs and other more complex sketch types like splines, ellipses, and conics. It's really easy to drag a sketch into a position which suddenly flips geometry and causes the whole thing to blow up or give you an error. It's also equally easy to add a constraint that overdefines the sketch, but it's no big deal. Just find the undo command in the standard toolbar or use control Z on the keyboard to revert back to the previous state. And you can do this as many times as you need to. Now that the contours are a bit closer to the origin, I'll connect the center point of the circle to the origin with a coincident relation, and it becomes fully defined since it already has a diameter applied to it. Next, I'd like the larger arc to share the same center point. To do this, you can either create a coincident relation between the center point of the arc and the origin, or you can use a concentric relation between the arc itself and the circle. There's really no functional difference here. I can still click and drag to change the size of the arc, so what size should it be? Well, this is an important decision, but again, it's up to you. I can apply a dimension directly to the arc to control it independently, or I can hold shift while clicking both the arc and the circle to define a dimension between them, causing the size of the arc to be dependent on the circle. You can see this behavior when I adjust the size of the circle, and that's a perfect example of design intent. Next, I'll define the overall dimensions of the sketch, and this is often done as a first step right after connecting the sketch to the origin. I'll start with a dimension from the origin to the bottom horizontal line, and then another from the origin to the right-hand arc, which refers to the arc's center point. Because this dimension is effectively connecting two points, 
I need to make sure to move my cursor into the proper position to capture only the horizontal aspect of this dimension. You can see several pieces of the sketch turn black after this, meaning I'm getting quite a bit closer. Now we can address the slot feature. I'll start by clicking and dragging the whole contour closer to the position I want, and this is good practice to help avoid overlapping geometry and other issues when applying constraints. I'll add another concentric relation between the arcs, and most of it turns black since a height dimension is already present. Now I can define the length either between the apexes of the arcs by using the shift key when I select them, or from center to center using the construction line. Again, it's your choice here, but this last dimension completes the slot. Let's take a look at this angled line segment. Clicking and dragging it reveals missing tangent relations, which were clearly supposed to be here so we can reapply those. This results in better behavior when I drag the end point of the line, but it looks like another tangent relation is missing as well, so I'll apply that too. Now the dragon behavior is very predictable, and we can move on to dimensions. Missing tangency relations tend to be a very common problem for new SOLIDWORKS users, so always be on the lookout for those, especially when working with arcs. An angular dimension between these two lines would make quite a bit of sense here, so let's set that to 120 degrees. All that's left in this area is the arc, which is still adjustable in size. Since the tangent relations are already in place, we can define this by applying a radial dimension to the arc, or a linear dimension between one of the endpoints and another piece of the sketch. I like the idea of using a radius here. Finally, our last couple of sketch entities are a bit more complicated, particularly this spline. Splines are the exception to the rule of full definition, and in many cases they're intentionally left underdefined, usually representing highly organic and sometimes flexible geometry. While it's technically possible to fully define a spline, it's generally pretty impractical, and if you do need to fully define a spline, you should consider using a style spline instead. You can learn more about the style spline and how to fully define one in our SOLIDWORKS Advanced Sketching Techniques course. Instead of using the spline, I'll instead delete it and replace it with a line segment and then reapply tangency to both endpoints. A final parallel relation between the two angled lines results in a fully defined sketch, and now we can be certain that anytime we make adjustments to these dimensions, the rest of the sketch will behave the way we expect it to. There is one final tool that can speed up the process of fully defining sketches pretty dramatically, fittingly named Fully Defined Sketch. However, it's not recommended to use this tool until you have a strong understanding of both sketch constraints and design intent. That being said, if you're ready to see how Fully Defined Sketch can help you define small sketches, large sketches, or even imported drawing files in a matter of seconds, be sure to check out our video titled Automatically Defining Sketches. If this video helped you, do us a huge favor and give it a like so other SOLIDWORKS users can see it too. And consider subscribing to the channel for weekly tips and tricks. If you're looking to become SOLIDWORKS certified and want to learn from the experts, head over to solidprofessor.com for customizable courses, practice exams, modeling challenges, and more. Thanks for watching and see you next time.